All right. All right, guys. This is our team call for July 30th. Tomorrow is July 31st. And we have an amazing, amazing guest today. Her name is Keisha Fitzgerald. And you guys, I'm going to read um, just a little bit about her. Um, I am obsessed with her Empower Her podcast. If you do not listen to her, please go listen to her. She's probably the most straightforward woman um, that you will meet um, and you really do feel like you're just chatting with her in a coffee shop or you're at Trader Joe's. If you listen to her, we're always at Trader Joe's for some reason. So <laughs> you're in a grocery store shopping or you're going to be, you know, just right across from her. Um, she is a nine star diamond in her first business center, a two star diamond in her second business center. Um, they changed the name this year to the Legacy Club. So it used to be called the Millions Club. Um, she is a three time elite coach success club legend 66 months um and y'all she's been coaching since january of 2014 i was most inspired by her because she thought like she had her dream job right and um Turns out this is what she was supposed to be doing. So I'm gonna let her kind of just go at it. And I asked her to talk to, we have a lot of ladies on here pushing for that diamond rank. And um, I think they kind of like, don't keep their blinders on, right? And they let all of the comparison kind of get in the way. So I'm just gonna leave you to it. You know what you're doing and um, rock it out girl. Thank you so much, Heather, for the intro. You guys, I'm so excited to chat with you all and hopefully share something that can help you move your business forward and move yourself forward as a person. And I feel like I need to add a little bit of context to kind of how I got started with coaching because there's a couple of things along the way that really served me. And you know, you can kind of connect the dots when you're looking backwards. So there's a couple of things that I did that I want to share with you guys um, that might be helpful. So. Uh, like Heather said, I actually started coaching in January of 2014. And at the time I was living in downtown Seattle and I was working as a project manager in an IT company. And I actually loved my job. I loved my managers. I had a lot of career trajectory. I made a great income. I didn't have one of those stories that we often hear about of like a back against the wall, had to make this business work type of story, which I think is interesting. Um, because I did have this gut feeling that I wanted quote unquote more in my life. And I didn't really know what more was. So I decided that instead of, I don't know, like going back to school or switching career paths when I was really happy in my job, that I would look for something that I could control. And for me, my health and fitness goals had been majorly put on the back burner. Like I mentioned, I was in IT project management. So my team that I was overseeing was in Beijing and Chengdu, China, while I was in Seattle. So the time difference was crazy. Um, my work hours were, were crazy. To be honest, I wasn't really qualified for my job. So I was like working a ton trying to prove myself and that I could handle it as a really young female in a predominantly male environment. Um, so what I decided to do was P90X. And I quit on day four of P90X. Has anyone done P90X? Anyone? Yeah. Okay. So day four is yoga and it was 90 minutes. So I just kept quitting on day four. And what it really taught me was, okay, I'm going to reach back out to the person that I actually signed up and bought P90X from, which is it's the whole nother story in itself. But essentially there was a coach that I was following. Her name is Brigida. I was following her on Instagram. She was the only coach that I was following and she was posting quotes and sharing pictures of her and her family. And she just seemed like a really nice person. So when I decided that I was gonna work on my health and fitness goals and buy the hardest program I had ever heard of, I just put her name down as my coach, which now I realize seems really weird. But at the time I was like, oh, well like maybe her and her cute family will get commission. Had no idea what was coming um, because I quit on day four but I still was watching her be so consistent sharing on social media what she was doing. And I was typing her name in, like looking at her Facebook post and totally creeping on her like, what am I doing you? Um, I knew she was credible because she was consistent. So what I was doing wasn't working, right? I didn't want to join her challenge group. She asked me about it. I was like, oh, I'm not interested in that. I don't even get it. Um, I wanted to do it on my own. But after I wasn't seeing success because I kept quitting on day four, I reached back out to her 
when I was like, hey, I see you posting about this all the time. I think I want to join one of your groups. She told me about the coaching opportunity and I decided right then and there, I was going to sign up as a discount coach, but I was never going to build a business. So two things that I want you to take from there just at the beginning of that story is one, um, being consistent doesn't just help build your confidence, but it builds the credibility with people that you have no idea are watching you, right? I didn't necessarily connect with her story per se, but I did connect with, I wanted, I identified her as credible, not because of any accolades, but because she was just consistent. She was showing up so I could predict that. And so often we think it's gonna be some massive thing that we need to do or, oh, I'm credible when I reach X, Y, Z point in our business. To me, I didn't understand anything about what she was doing, except for that she was consistent. So then the other thing that I wanna just pull from what I just told you guys is she offered me both options straight out the gates. She offered me, do you want to, you know, you can join as a coach or you can join my group with Shakeology as a customer. She had so much conviction and the value that I didn't even second guess her for a second. And when she mentioned coaching, she said there was a discount opportunity. She didn't plug the business. She didn't tell me I would be great at the business. In fact, if she would have told me that, I think I would have been discouraged because I didn't think this was something that I could do. Um, and I didn't honestly think it was something that I needed to do. Because like I shared with you guys at the beginning, I had all the things on paper. I didn't think this was a quote unquote real job or even a real side opportunity. But she gave me both options. She added me into her team page. And then what I did is what so many of us do is I just creeped on everything that was happening in there. Because even though I said I quote unquote never wanted to build a business, I was a creeper and I just wanted to see what everyone was posting. They were sharing how they were impacting people and they were sharing how their challengers were crying and saying that these products and these programs and these communities help their marriages, help their life. And I was like, what? I'm making great money. I've got great career trajectory, but like, no, nobody's telling me that at work. So I wanted fulfillment. And I think sometimes we think that the person who's going to want this is going to want the same things that we want. Brigida started this business because she needed income for her family. They were in a desperate situation where she needed to make this work. For me, I didn't need to make this work, but I really deeply wanted fulfillment that I had no idea was going to come from this. So what I always tell coaches is don't write someone off because of what you perceive their story is and don't assume that their need is going to be the exact same need as yours because I came into this thinking I'm going to get more fulfillment and that's all I'm going to get. This is never going to be a quote unquote real job for me. And I say that all the time because that has such a negative connotation to it, but that's really how I felt. So fast forward right? I, I'm a discount coach. I don't want to build this business or anything, but I'm watching again. I'm sharing. I'm seeing these posts that are shared into the team page about people that are getting their lives changed. So my insert there, and I'm a huge advocate of always adding discount coaches into team pages, even if they tell you they never want to build a business. Cause I said, I never want to build a business. And here we are today. Right. Um, and I would never have started had I not seen those types of posts that were really um, drawing the person internally that really wanted that fulfillment aspect and that impact side of things. So I reached back out to her, decided I was going to build a business. And here's for the girls that are pushing for a rank right now that are pushing for a diamond. Here's the thing that worked really well for me. I decided that it wasn't going to be hard. Okay. So I'm not a huge fan of like, I don't want to like offend anyone if you do this, but I'm not a huge fan of like push for emeralds because I don't think it's really a push. I think it's kind of like you decide that you're doing it or you decide that you're not doing it. And your brain, just like anything I talk about this, Heather mentioned, you know, I have a podcast and I love talking about this and I love learning about the brain, but it's self-confirming bias kicks in for whatever story you've created for yourself. So if you've decided that diamond is going to be hard, then it's going to feel really hard no matter how many templates you have, no matter who speaks on your team calls, no matter how much access you have to a top team in the network like you guys do, no matter what you have, if you've decided it's going to be hard, your brain is literally going to look for reasons. Oh, my in-laws are in town. Oh, my kid's sick. Oh, this person's busier or less busy than me. That's why she can do it. She's got a bigger following. She's got a better transformation. Like, I mean, you can look for millions of reasons, but on the same side of things, you can decide that the story that you're telling yourself isn't serving you and tell yourself a better story. So for me, when I decided to build this business, I decided right then and there that I was going to build a side business and I wanted to know what did it take to build a business. I didn't see the bigger picture of what this could be. I definitely did not see me eventually leaving 
a dream job that I'll get to in a second. Um, but I did decide I wanted to build a business and that I was going to be a business owner, even if this was on the side. To me, the label of business owner meant I was going to treat this like a business, even if I never saw it going in anywhere in terms of a massive like financial business. And here's the other part that maybe this could be the one thing that you hear that could change your business is I decided take out all of the income, take out the recognition, take out anything that Beachbody's created. This was going to be the way that I was going to learn how to be more me. And this was going to be the way that I was going to just have more fulfillment and happiness in my life as an individual, no matter who signed up. I was going to get so obsessed with falling in love with the process, not what the process could produce or where the process could get me or what income it could bring into our family or whatever it would be. I was detached from that and obsessed with how can I just be more me? Because like I mentioned to you, to you guys, I was a project manager in an IT company. So I was in a very buttoned up environment, all predominant, like 95% of the people that I worked with were 20 years older than me, all males. Like if you can't tell already, I've got a lot of energy and it's like really like crazy all over. So I had to really contain that. But with Beachbody, this was the thing that I could be me, that I could talk to everyone like we're best friends, that I could show up as myself. So I won this business. Like this business was successful for me day one that I decided to do it before I ever made a dollar because I did something outside of my comfort zone. So that was a win. And number two was I decided this was going to be the thing that it was going to help me be more me. So no matter how long it took me to get to my goals, I was already, I was already worth it. Right. And in fact, it was actually cheaper for me to be a coach than it was to be a customer because I was in drink psychology anyway, beside the point. But if you don't have a reason why you're doing this for you as a person, I think so often we get caught up in just these beach body milestones, which are important because as humans, we love progress and you want to have these small goals that you can celebrate, but don't miss the opportunity to figure out how this can serve you as a person. Because I know I could never use the podcast as an example. I could never start a podcast if I wasn't so obsessed with personal growth, which I learned from Beachbody. I wouldn't have the opportunity to do other things in the future in addition to Beachbody because I wouldn't have the skill set that I've learned to be an entrepreneur like I've learned in a really safe environment like Beachbody, right? So you don't know where this could take you, the skills that you're learning as a coach, if you actually do this and decide that it's going to be a business, even if it's never going to be a full-time business. I have no goals to retire my husband like a lot of coaches do in this business. Technically, I don't have a husband, although I do have a fiance now, which is fun. But I, that's not my goal. That's never been my goal. But my goal was, I'm going to be more me. I'm going to get fulfillment because I'm going to help other girls like me who also don't think that this is a real thing or that this could be something for them. And I'm just going to focus on falling in love with the process, not what the process could produce. That being said, I also like some goals because how fun is it to hit goals? How fun is it to see progress and know that your effort is equating to success in another way that you can measure besides just fulfillment and impact in being you? So for me, I asked my upline coach, I was like, okay, so what do I have to do to build a business? And thank God she said, hit Success Club 10 and go Emerald. And I was like, oh, well, that seems not that hard. I, I don't know why, you guys. I created this story that really served me, which is it's not going to be that hard. And then I looked for everything to approve that to be correct. So I would ask you right here, right now, is the story that you're telling yourself, and you know what that story is, is it serving you? Are you telling yourself that you're not capable? Are you telling yourself that you're too busy? Are you telling yourself that you're not qualified? Are you telling yourself you don't have a great enough transformation? What are you telling yourself? And if you need a tactic to work through this, take out a piece of paper, write the story on the top, make like a T chart on like lined paper and write out the story that you're telling yourself and then challenge yourself to come up with all of the things that you've done that disprove that. For example, I'm not qualified. Well, I bet you, you didn't feel qualified to be a mom until you like, birth the human, I don't have any kids, but like birth the human out of your body and all of a sudden now you're a mom, right? That baby, you're keeping that baby alive. So maybe you didn't think you were qualified for the role that you're in now and look at you killing it in your corporate job. Maybe you didn't think you were qualified to help your mom through a really tough time or your sister, right? There's so many things that you've done that you weren't qualified to do. So the story that you're telling yourself, you got to get rid of it because that's going to be more important than any type of inviting structure that I can give you, right? I'll, I'll answer any questions you guys have. I'm the most open book of all open books, but I just want you to start there because that's where I had to start. Because looking back, 
why I saw quick success in terms, I didn't even understand that it was pretty quick my first year in coaching is because I literally just told myself a really positive story. And then I looked for all the ways that I thought that I could do this. Right. Of course I was scared. Of course I had friends that didn't get me. Of course I like, you know, would post pictures where I'd lick my shaker cup and like just put all these hashtags and it was real weird. But I grew through that process so I could learn and it helped me build connective tissue that served me massively with mentoring new coaches because I can say, Oh girl, works out just fine. I did the same thing too. Right? So number one, the story, I'm just kind of winging this. So I'm going to like make sure that you guys give me the questions that you want me to draw or that you guys want to hear from me. I want to make sure I answer your questions, but I do want to walk you through a couple of other things that were really helpful. So like I said, I started my business in January of 2014. My coach said, go Emerald and hit Success Club 10. I'm glad she said 10 and not five because I would have gone for five if she said five. That just seemed like that was what I was going to do. So when I did that, that put a confidence deposit in my bucket, right? Now it's like muscle memory, right? Like once you've done one push up and then Jericho is like, do, do two more, whatever. You're going to do two more because you already know that you can do one. And we need to find those tiny little wins that we can put as confidence deposits in our bucket as quickly as possible. As new coaches, like if you're a brand new coach or you're mentoring a brand new coach, I'm always setting up a goal with them for it to happen within like 24 hours because I want them to get that burst of confidence. It doesn't have to be success club 10, but maybe it's have that real conversation with your husband of why this matters to you. Have that real conversation with your mom or your sister of why it's important to you that she supports you in this business. Maybe that is the most epic win for them. We've got to figure out ways to give our coaches as well as ourselves wins. And for the coach that's been here for a while, I want to talk to you, and I don't know who this person is, but maybe it's one of you, who has set the goal for a diamond multiple times, right? You set the goal, you didn't hit it. You set the goal, you didn't hit it. And maybe you guys have, I don't know exactly what's going on, but maybe you guys have a push group. We're all pushing for diamond at a certain time. Great. But you, if you set that goal before, hear me loud and clear when I say, we've got to figure out a different story. How is this time going to be different so that when your brain wears off from the hype of just being like, yeah, let's do it together. When that wears off, as soon as you get one curveball or one coach cancellation, we need to have a default story that you can go to that will serve you proving to you that this time is different. Okay. So maybe you knowing you, like maybe you need more accountability. So you need to find someone that you can check in with and, and like do zoom calls where you guys are working together. Um, maybe you need to share in like a business builder group or make a thread and share what you're doing every single day and what your game plan is. If you're a mom of tiny humans, I don't know what that's like, but all of my mom coaches say, you never know what your day is going to look like. So maybe your goal is just what you get done before you put your head on the pillow and you stop stressing about these perfect time blocks because you have a newborn, right? What is going to be different about it this time? And if you can identify even just one thing that will make it different, then you're not going to default back to, well, I set this goal before and I never hit it. So of course I'm not going to hit it. Does anyone like head nods if that's kind of where you're at? Okay. A few of you guys. All right. So to that coach, that's what I want to say to you. And what I want to say to the coach that's eager and excited and doesn't have any um, like hesitation, you're like, I'm doing this. I'm ready to rock. Put me in, right? Don't compare yourself to someone else, okay? If you want to compare yourself, to, uh, here's the thing. You're going to compare yourself because we all do as humans. In fact, I want to retract that last, state, last statement of not comparing yourself because you're going to, but we can do it in a way that serves us. You can look at someone else as proof that it can be done. But if you are a mom of three kids and you're looking at a single 25 year old who built this business full time and thinking that she's hitting success club 50 and you're, you know, trying to juggle keeping three humans alive, including and four with yourself and doing all of this stuff, your life looks different, right? So if you're going to compare, which you will find someone that has a similar story to you so that you can see what's possible with her story and then know that it doesn't matter what you even know about her because well, you don't know what's going on behind closed doors. You don't know what stories she's telling herself. Maybe she's telling herself stories that are serving her and she showed up so consistently, her confidence bucket is legit overflowing. Okay, so if you're gonna compare, don't compare someone who has a completely different stage of life than you, that's just not gonna serve you anyways. And if you are gonna compare to someone, pick someone who has a story that's similar to you, to you, but at the same time, understand if she's a lot further in her business, it's because she's failed more than you. I want to repeat that. 
if she is more, if she's seen more success in this business, she's heard so many more no's than you. She's had so many more coach cancellations than you because then she got to take that, what she learned from just freaking face planting and take that and choose it to be feedback to put in her arsenal of tools so that she can show up again. And the difference happens where as you fail or you face plan or you get these things that go wrong or these curveballs, but you choose to stand back up, it starts to just feel more normal to be standing than it does to stay down, right? So you got to just fail more. And I think that's going to help you get where you want to go. So I actually, like I said, started in January 2014, went Emerald, hit Success Club. My upline coach came to me when I had three coaches. None were building. And she was like, you are so close to Diamond. <laughs> she was totally just like, in my head. I don't know. I was like, you're right. I looked at the little thing. Like I Googled what is diamond. And I saw that there was four on each side and like one was an emerald on each side. And I was like, I am so close to diamond. <laughs> you guys realize I didn't know like ignorance was bliss in a way, but at the same time, I would say the same thing to a coach that comes to me now, right? You're as close as you decide. And I, and I have seen coaches go from, I've seen a coach with a mindset that's not serving her. That's one coach away from diamond get passed up in terms of advancing her business by a coach who's decided she's doing it and is looking for all of the reasons that she wants to serve people and is having those conversations with the people around her and saying why this is important and serving and serving and serving who gets to diamond way faster than that girl does. It's not a matter of how far you have to go. It's a matter of how bad you want it and the stories that you're telling yourself in pursuit of it. Right? So I don't really care if you've got two coaches and you're like, I want to go diamond by August 15th. Go, girl, like go diamond by August 15th and then show people what's possible because guess what? Someone else needs to see you do it too. It's about you. It's about the people that you're going to serve because, right, all those coaches are people who when you impact that person, you impact everyone around them. But also someone on this team or in this network needs to hear your story that could inspire them to take action because they saw you do it with three kids. They saw you do it going through a divorce. They saw you doing it moving across the country. They saw you do it when you still have... 80 pounds that you want to lose. So you are proof to them. So when they want to compare themselves, they can look at you as inspiration. Oh, that makes me sweaty and fired up. How cool is that? Right? So I did go diamond really quickly, not really understanding what it was. And then what happened is I got added into a community page with my coaches, other diamonds. These women had like pages and newsletters and way bigger Instagram followings than me. And they'd been coaching for a lot longer than me. And I about just killed my business right there, right? Two months into coaching because I was like, ah, uh, I don't want to do a newsletter. That sounds like taking a fork and shoving it into my eyeball. Not my thing. I don't have an Instagram following. I don't want to do a like page. I have no idea like what like Facebook ads are. Like I'm not interested in any of that. I just want to talk to people that I'm excited about. And I watched all of these coaches and I thought, if I have to do it that way, I'm, I'm never going to be successful. So this is when the most important decision I ever made besides the one when I signed up was I said, okay, I'm not going to do it this way. I'm going to do it my way. I messaged her and said, love ya. I'm out of this group. I got to just do it my way. And then our, that next following year, our team went from diamond to nine star qualifying with almost all of my diamonds in one star. And that was a massive year. But the main reason was a crap ton of work cranking the volume up on, you know, what I was doing and how much I was working in my business. And it was also just a lot of belief and pouring into this community and making it a we thing, not a me thing. Every time that coaches on this team wanted to work or on my team wanted to work on their business, I would jump on zoom calls and we would all work together and we made it as much community driven as we could. Cause while I'm not necessarily someone that needs that um, accountability to show up for my business, there are so many coaches on our team that do. So why not just get on the call and vibe off of their energy, right? So maybe there's opportunities for you to find people on your team that you can connect with, that you can develop and grow and build your businesses together while you're pushing for the same goal and make it a team thing, right? And I know you guys are already doing that. Obviously, you're all on this call together and you're all working towards your goals, but that was really helpful for us. Um, fast forward in April of 2015. So oh, we moved from Seattle to New York City for my boyfriend, now fiance, to go to NYU Dental School. And I got my actual dream job at Google where they literally give you free snacks there. You can make lattes, like Justin's peanut butter packets. You get everything, like just giant bowls of food for free. It was amazing. I loved my team. I loved my 
bosses, everything. It was the ultimate test of this fun little side hustle that I was starting to have a lot of fire in my belly for and a lot of excitement for was really going to be the thing that I wanted to go through um, or to really pursue. And in September, when I was making maybe like a fifth of what I needed to be making to leave, I decided to tell my team that I was going to make this my full-time job and I didn't care how long it took. Um, so it ended up April 2015. I left the corporate world and I've been a full-time coach since then. Lots of ups and downs, tons of things that I could share with you about all of the ways that I failed in massive ways. But I want to make sure that I'm answering any questions that you guys have on anything. Social media, inviting, failure, mindset. Hit me with it. I don't even know how much time we have or what time it is, but I'm ready. What do we have? Any questions? Y'all, I would say it's, let's just unmute y'all. I mean, if you have a question, seriously, um, either raise your hand, put it in the chat, unmute yourself. This or is honestly, I'm just afraid of sharing or asking. Sharing my story is easy, but then trying to get someone to join is a scary, I guess the, the no is scary for me. Yeah. Ooh. I don't know. I don't know how to get away from that, that, that's fear. I yep. Guess. So I think the only way to get over the fear is repetition, right? Of just doing it over. It gets easier the more that you do it, but also the mindset around that. And it's Katie, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So hopefully you'll know that my heart is coming from a good place, but I'm going to, I'm going to call you out. Like I would call myself out and say, when I'm fearful of what, of inviting someone, it's often because I'm thinking of myself, not of that actual person, right? You're thinking I'm scared what she's going to think of me. If I invite her, she thinks I'm one of those weird beach body people. Oh, I'm like, just, in, I'm just talking to her because she wants, she thinks I'm, I'm just talking to her to sell her something, right? Like the story yeah. that we're actually telling ourselves is coming from a fear place of what does she think of me? So if we can flip that and get ourselves to a place of gratitude when we're inviting of why could this community serve this individual? Looking through her Instagram or any conversations that you've had, like why does she need this? And really come from that place of how can this serve her in a really meaningful way? Then you come from this place of like, it's selfish if I don't invite her, if I know that this could serve her. And it comes from this place of providing solutions rather than selling. And I honestly don't think that selling is a negative thing in any way, but in our society, we have a lot of negative connotations towards selling. So if that feels like a weird word that just doesn't sit well in your stomach, I say, you're serving. How can I serve this person? Well, we need to know what her pain point is. So a question that works really well for me within inviting, say, um, I'll give you guys real quick if this would be helpful. Had not that this would be helpful if I just kind of explain to you real quickly my structure of how I invite. Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. So what I do is say I'm connected with someone on Instagram, I'm going to invite them via voice message. If anyone is about ready to pee their pants because they're scared to do a voice message, I promise you it's so much more effective than sending a, a scripted invite because people can feel your excitement. If you've got kids like throwing Legos and screaming in the background, awesome, even better. It makes you so much more real. And if you're, you've got car, like your dog's like jumping on you, like my dog always does. I'm like, oh, sorry, my dog just like bit my foot. It just makes you so much more relatable, okay? So it won't be perfect and you don't want it to be, okay? So I send a blank, it's kind of like a blanket voice message invite, which would say something along the lines of, hey girl, I know this is random. We're, we're connected on Instagram and I don't even actually know you, but you seem like someone that I'd be friends with that would totally vibe with our community. I run these virtual boot camps with a bunch of busy women from all across the country. I always say busy women because the time objection is the one that I get the most. Bunch of busy women from all across the country. We check into a private app group and we've got access to this digital platform that's kind of like Netflix for streaming your workouts. We hold each other accountable, just kick butt together. You just seem like a girl that might vibe with that. Does that sound up your alley at all? Okay, so I realized that was really long, but it's gonna take me like 30 seconds to say that. And what, what I do that works really well for me and makes it really fun and fulfilling for me is it is really kind of a blanket invite of why I think this could serve her. It doesn't give a ton of information. And then she's basically gonna come back to me with three responses. Something along the lines of like, sure, like I might be interested in that, or I've been following you, I've been wanting you to like reach out and ask me about this. Or she's gonna say, how much does it cost? Or she's not gonna respond. 
or maybe she'll say no. I've been coaching for five and a half years and I've yet to have someone say like, Keisha, you suck. Go like live under a rock. If you've got someone like that that's ever said something to you, please remember that's a reflection of them and where they're at in their personal growth journey and not anything to do with you. And you probably don't want that girl on your team anyways. Just saying, okay? So of those responses, how much does it cost? Tell me more. Can you send me some information? Can you send me a link? Um, all of that stuff, that I kind of coupled together into one little lumpy sandwich. And that sandwich, I don't answer those questions, period, because I don't know how to answer those questions until I have more information. So for Katie's question of being fearful of inviting, this has helped me flip the script. I get this huge lumpy sandwich. I don't know why I'm calling it that. That just came out of left field. But I get this lumpy sandwich. And of that, all of these different answers, how much does it cost? Send me a link. Tell me more, whatever. I'm going to say, awesome. I'm so excited that you're interested because if they're asking any type of question, even if it's how much does it cost, they are interested. I'm so excited you're interested. I thought this would be up your alley. So I'm validating their interest, right? Because they've said that they're interested by asking, but then I don't know anything about them and their health and fitness journey. So the next thing I'm going to ask is, okay, can you tell me a little bit more about your health and fitness goals? What's working for you? And this one's really key. And, and, and what's not working as well as you would like. Having both of those answers, our brains are like computers, right? We're gonna look for what we, like the question that we're asked, we're gonna look for that answer. So when I'm asked what's working and what's not working as well as they would like, they're gonna answer that of literally giving you a layup. So now instead of being fearful of inviting or fearful of selling, you get to solve their problem that they told you. But where sometimes we feel like sweaty or like itchy or like we're going to vomit or something is when we're trying to predict what their pain point is or giving them so much information or just like word vomiting all over them. And then we get to the end and they ghost or they don't see the value. They think it's too expensive, but they haven't even identified that this is going to solve their problem. And we don't even know what their problem is. So we feel weird. And when we get that over and over again, that weird feeling, then we decide that we're scared, like Katie mentioned, which is so normal. I don't mean to be calling you out, but so normal. I felt the same way too when I first started. But now I'm excited to invite people because I know how much this could serve them. And when I get to know what their problem is, I get to just be this solution provider, problem fixer. And it's freaking awesome. And it's so fun. So then I can go from there. And keep in mind, if they don't respond to you, like if they're ghost people, or if they say no, I said no. Okay. You never know, right? How, actually, just for fun, because I can see a bunch of you guys, raise your hand if the first time that you were invited to be a coach, you signed up and just hit the ground running. I see of all of these people that I can see, one person raised their hand. But it's funny because when we're in it, we just assume that when we invite people, they're going to say yes. But I'm like, I would have never said yes to coaching at first. I have no idea like what I was even doing, right? So that being said, what if we were able to see those people that do ghost or even those people that say no as a really healthy part of a thriving business? I would say that 80% of my challenge pack sales come from follow-ups. So how am I going to follow up with someone if they didn't say no or ghost me? I need all those creepers. I want you just watching my Instagram from creeping, creeping, creeping. And when I don't push back on you and I say, all right, girl, I'm going to follow up with you next month because I know this will be a good fit for you and I'm not going anywhere. And I know that I can help you. And I actually do. I've gotten her trust. And I would honestly rather have someone take two months to sign up than sign up instantly with no hesitations because she's going to stay longer because she's critically thought about it. And that's the only, where that's coming from is just my own stats from over time, right? So we get fearful, it's because we're attaching our success with the outcome, forgetting that it's our job to invite someone so that they can now watch your social media, right? Like, Katie, I think you said it's not that difficult for you to share your story or getting more comfortable sharing your story. That's awesome. That's a huge part of this business because what you can think about inviting as is a way to plant the seed for them to view you through a different lens. So Brigida, like I mentioned, she was a stay-at-home mom of three. I don't have any kids. I was working a full-time corporate job. Um, she had a very back-against-the-wall situation, and it's, her story is so inspiring, but I didn't connect with it at all. So in my head, I just put her name down for her to get commission, okay? But she invited me right after, like when she saw that that order went through, she reached out to me on Facebook. There's not a lot of cases, found me and invited me, and I said no. 
But what she did by inviting me, even though I said no, was she planted the seed that she's the one doing this. I'm the one that thinks that I can't because I'm not a stay at home mom. That's literally the story that I had is like, oh, this is not a quote unquote real job. And she's a stay at home mom. That's why she does this. And she's got this crazy story and I don't have that. That's the story that I was telling myself of why I couldn't do this. But because she invited me, now I creeped on her through the lens of someone that could do this. Not because she told me she believed in me or anything like that, which she's done over the years a million times. That's not what I mean. But more so, she didn't tell me anything crazy. She just invited me. So I was watching through the lens of that. So if you can do two things, I think that help eliminate fear of inviting. One is detaching yourself from the outcome and understanding that you need no's, not right now's, and yeses to build a healthy, thriving business. And the second part is that you're inviting without the goal of them signing up straight out the gates because you need all those things, but also because you're planting the seed that even if they don't respond, now they're watching through that lens. And that's the reason that my entire life and future marriage and how I'm going to be as a mom to my kids is drastically different because this woman asked me, simply asked me to be a discount coach. And I'm so incredibly grateful. And I'm sure you feel that way too. So when you're feeling fear, maybe you need to sit down with a pen and paper. And this is where the tough love I just like, I feel it coming. So I'm just going to put it on you. Is when you, need, you get down with a pen and paper and you write, how would your life be so drastically different if you didn't have this? And I don't care what your rank is or if you're a million club or blah, blah, success club, 8 million months. Who cares? I don't care about any of that. Are you just a happier person who's gotten a glimpse or even a sliver of your own potential and you're excited and passionate about your life? Has your marriage changed? Are you a better mom? Have you shown up in your life better? Are you more excited? Have you gotten off antidepressants? Like, I don't know how your world has changed, but I bet you it has. So when you come from this place of gratitude and you've spent some time journaling out how different your life would be without this, regardless of what your rank is, what your income is, what, what beach body credentials you've received, who freaking cares? What I care about is who you are as a human and you're a better human. I guarantee that than you were when you started this business in some way. And when you come from that place of gratitude, that this is a gift and it's your duty that while you're here for however long you're here, I hope you're here with me until we're like a hundred, like twerking in our wheelchairs. But if you're not, that's okay too, because this is going to still serve you, right? This is still going to serve you because of the person that you're going to be coming, be like become in pursuit of the goal. In learning how to invite, you're learning how to better communicate. You think that's not going to help you in your life? Even if you quit coaching six months from now, it's still going to help you. So why not, while you're here, make it count? Not because you need to retire your husband or build a million dollar business, but because why not make it count while you're here and go all in and see what it's really about so that even if it doesn't work out, you can say you gave it your all. And if you can't say that right now, I don't want you to have shoulda, woulda, couldas and wonder what if would have happened. Because that... Sitting with that later, I don't think that's going to feel very good. You know? Whoa! Getting hot up in here! Any other questions? So, so what did you say that you do for those that ghost you or stop answering back to you? Yeah. I l bless and release. I don't worry about it. There's okay. seven like, you million people. Yeah. I thought you said you did something, but never mind. I miss. Oh, I yeah. Good. If someone, so if someone um, says not, no, not right now, I'm going to tell them when I'm going to follow up with them. I'm not asking their permission. I'm just going to tell them. I'm going to follow up with you next month. I do really think, like, I know you're excited about this and money's tight for you right now. Don't even worry. I'm not going anywhere. I'll touch base with you next month and see how you're doing. And then I follow through on that. But I need those people because a lot of my challenge packs and new coaches come from those follow-ups, right? So I have to have no's. And when you go into your month thinking, I have to have no's because those are your follow-ups, you don't get as anxious about the no's because you're like, oh, good. Woo. Okay, I got one. <laughs> I need that for a follow-up next month, right? Does that make sense, Katie? Yeah, it did. Um, I've, got a, I've got a friend right now that was on Beachbody and we had the same coach and honestly, she didn't really do much for us because when I stopped showing up for the workouts, she stopped showing up for me. Mm -hmm. And I think she just, she told me she just, she didn't tell me she left Beachbody, but she wanted more information. But right now she's pregnant. And she told okay. me right now, just getting through the pregnancy. So I don't even know where to go from with that. So I, I mean, two, I'm going to give you two answers. And this, I think, will apply to no matter what the situation is. 
pretty much everything in Beachbody from my experience can come down to two things, either find more people or ask better questions. And sometimes that ask better questions is to yourself, not just to that other person. So I'm always going to say both of those things. So for you, Katie, in this particular situation, I would want to know more about how she's feeling. Is she like, what, what kind of like stuff does she have going on with her doctor? Like, is she able to work out? Does she want to be working out? Does she want to work on her nutrition while she like, what is she, what's going on in her world? Right. So I would seek to understand more. Um, I'm not in the game of trying to convince someone. So I'm going to seek to understand because I want to know people's story because I'm curious, but if this is not for her right now, then awesome. You can still be connected with her. You can still love her, but then goes to option number two, ask what her questions, right? Either to her or to yourself or find more people, right? So then go find more people because there are so many people, especially if you're starting to get passionate about sharing your story. I would really think about who that person is that you're most excited to serve. I'm not for everyone and I'm very okay with that, right? I realize I've got way too much energy for some people. I'm too aggressive for some people. I totally get that, but I'm so right for some people. And I'm so laser focused on the person that I'm most excited to serve that I'm not worried about who I'm not for. And the person that I'm most excited to serve can feel that I'm excited to serve them, that I get them. And I'm only talking to her, my social media posts. So that's another thing on that too, is like when I first started coaching, I think I had this mentality of like, ah, oh, like this scarcity mindset of like, I need to talk to everyone. Otherwise I'll never have anyone that wants to be in my groups. But when it switched was number one, start with the people that you can serve. If you're a brand new coach, like your family, your friends, the people in your neighborhood, the people that you're around, like that's an amazing thing when you can serve the people that you're near um, or the people that you have relationships with already. From there, I like to think of who is the person that I'm most excited to serve that I can connect with on social media because she resonates with my story of having all the things on paper, but wanting more. That person I love talking to because she gets me and I get her. So much so that I started a podcast to talk to more of her, right? So maybe that helps. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. I guess the only thing is I see people's posts and especially the other coaches and I read them, but then I think, how in the world do you, how can I write a post? Some of them are kind of long and I'm not saying that there's anything worth wrong with that because I read them. It's not that I don't. They're interesting. I want to read them. And obviously other people do. But how do I write something that that resonates with people like me? And yeah. So I think from social media, what I think is helpful is to pick five areas. I've been doing this for like a long time and this has worked even as I've transitioned through different seasons of life. Is I basically just pick five areas that I'm interested in and I rotate through those topics. Right. And I just talk and I just envision one person that I'm talking to. I do this with podcasting and I do this with posts on social media where I just envision who is the person that I'm talking to. And I also really don't read a lot of people's posts, a lot of social, a lot of other coaches posts. I don't follow a lot of coaches because I want to keep my voice really authentic. I think it's important to be inspired by other people's story, but also like if you're not someone who maxes out the character limits on Instagram, do you right? Like, do it your way that feels fun and fulfilling because if you can stay in this mindset where you're having fun and you're being authentic and you are showing up consistently that builds credibility with your external audience and that builds confidence internally so sometimes that means having a plan like picking five different areas in your life that are important to you and alternating through those things you kind of go into the week with a game plan when i worked at google and had a crazy schedule on sunday nights my now fiance would sit down with me and him and I would look at our schedules and I would map out like, when am I going to work on my business? What, you know, activities do we have? When's date night? What do we have socially? Whatever's going on. And then I would also on the top of each day, I would put a topic for that day that I was going to post about. And I just rotated through like female empowerment or fitness or being in a, uh, like building a side business or living in downtown New York city, which has its own stories and in itself, right? Being in a relationship, things that I was interested in because what you post about is what you attract. I get very few people that ask me about like macros or like nitty gritty stuff about nutrition, even though we're a health and fitness company because I talk so much more about mindset and relationships and community and business than I do about that. So what you want to talk about, post about that. Who cares what other coaches are doing? 
right? It's, it's cool to be inspired, but I think what's going to help make this even more fun and fulfilling and make you feel like you're really talking to your people is when you start to just get more comfortable being yourself and figuring out what you do like and testing things out and understanding that it's not going to work every time. And you might be comparing your now, your behind the scenes, like this is, I've been in seasons like this where I'm comparing my like no bra, like salsa, like messy bun, super sweaty, like just got into a fight with my boyfriend, like to someone's like carefully curated, like photoshopped like picture on Instagram. And it's like, ah, catch it when you're doing it and realize that that's curated content. So like take it through that lens, right? Just like you might be comparing someone's year six, month seven to your six months into coaching and you're just trying to figure it out right so and i'm not saying that that's your story but keep that frame of reference i think that's really helpful and i think sometimes even though we know that fundamentally we're scrolling and we're inundated with so much content and we're thinking and we're comparing where we're at right now to that person's engagement photos like what you don't look like that right now they probably have a messy one and no makeup and no bra and like a holy pair of sweatpants on when they posted it Right. So anyways, any other questions or anything that I can help with? We do have a few questions here on the chat and then yeah. I really wanted to touch on, you know, you, I'm sure have had the, um, experience with your fallen diamonds or continuing to keep your diamonds oh, yeah. pushing past diamond. Um, and I feel like sometimes when our diamond coaches, um, get to diamond, they stop the recruiting piece of it. And as a recruiter, I mean, I've been a recruiter for 15 years, so I know that like, that's what you're supposed to be keep, you know, you have to constantly recruit. How do you continue to keep your diamond coaches going consistently? Um, you know, I, I'm sure we have our ups and downs, but how mm -hmm. do you kind of focus them to continue to keep going and pushing past yep. that? So diamond is a, is a stepping stone, not an end goal on our team. So we really are focused on two star because I think two star drastically changes your income. So it's like, and right now, for example, a lot of our coaches are pushing for NLC um, of one star by November, but really they're pushing for two star by the end of the year. So I think kind of like stepping out those goals long-term of not just seeing diamond as the end goal, but more so as a, a way to continue to move forward your business and two stars real like diamond increases your income and makes you feel really confident and credible and gives you there's lots of benefits to diamond but then when you go two star and you can open up a secondary business center essentially like you times two your income can drastically grow from there so i think that longer term vision in general as a team has been helpful but also putting them together so that i'm not the person and i think this works at any rank whether it's emeralds pushing for diamond diamond pushing for one star two star um people that are at the same stage in their business and grouping them together with team-based goals or accountability to each other can help them all level up and i think that like diamond really is this like popcorn like contagious type effect where when you can get people moving they want to be part of the movement they want to be part of the progress so I think grouping them together and having a bigger vision has been extremely helpful. And then also just understanding that, and this is something that I really missed on, for those of you guys that know what 15 star is, our team locked in the qualification of 15 star, which is like the highest rank in the company. And four weeks into qualification, if you don't know, oops, someone's muted. Okay. If you don't know, um, for qualification of ranks, if you're a newer coach, um, you have to hold it for six weeks in order for you to qualify. And we were on week four, 15 star qualification. I had 15 diamonds, which in itself is a little bit scary because that's 15 people with 15 lives um, that might not be as invested in your this goal as you are. Um, and one of them actually quit and went to another network marketing company during qualification. And that was probably the hardest hit that I've taken in my business. The biggest goal that I could miss, the biggest income quarterly bonus that I could miss. It was the biggest one that Beach Bodies had um, since that date, which I should probably stop paying attention to. But what it taught me was, okay, as an entrepreneur, like as my own business owner, it's a little ridiculous for me to just count on, on having the bare bones. So now our team is pushing for 15 star again, but my goal is to have 20 diamonds in that first business center rather than building up another business center, which I know is a little bit high level for those that are just looking for diamond, but the same rules apply to going for diamond. As soon as you go diamond, I think your next goal is double down your diamond. 
hit success club in your account and double down your diamond. If you've got a husband or a mom or a sister as one of your emeralds, your next goal, as soon as you hit success club in your account, like set a deadline for that first like week of the month and just like push like it's the last week of the month um, and then double down so that you get really stable. So it's diamond, stabilize one star, stabilize two star, stabilize second business center, stabilize, right? Like really that focus of building a rock solid foundation, which means you've got to stay in it. And you also need to expect that people are going to quit. And try, unless, unless I'm missing anyone's story, I don't think anyone right now has had a coach quit during 15 star qualification that knocked you out of 15 star qualification. So if I can handle that and come back and figure it out, you can handle it too. Right. And your version of that is every different stage in your business. It's going to feel different. Um, but that taught me a really important lesson, which is stabilize and control what you can control and then kind of just bless and release the rest, you know? I like that explanation. I think that's a solid explanation for sure. Um, we have a few questions. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just ask a couple. I don't want, I want to respect your time, Keisha. Um, any tips how to grow um, your network on a daily basis? I know that you're growing your Instagram right now, um, for sure. Yeah. Um, any tips from you on your end? Yeah. So what I teach for growing Instagram is I personally don't know a ton about hashtags and I don't really focus a ton about the algorithm, but two things is one, like content that's shareable or content that is going to prompt someone to tag someone below. That's really helpful. But then as far as actually adding people, um, on our team, we do a lot of like finding the location. So for example, I'm a dog mom. There's like a dog park in Alabama, which I've never been to. I don't like to, to do local places personally, because I don't want to fall, like run into someone at Trader Joe's that I like found on Instagram, but you do you. I'll find places that I actually haven't been to and I'll follow the people that tag that location. So I'll just follow them. And when they follow me back, then I can message them from there. Um, so that's been really helpful. And um, yeah, so locations and then accounts that you like that are non-health and fitness. For example, if you like The Bachelorette, following like a contestant on The Bachelorette or Joanna Gaines and following the followers of that account um, has been helpful. Certain brands that you like and just like even looking at your physical body and being like, okay, where did I get this ring? Where did I get this hair tie? And thinking of some of those brands has been really helpful too. And then just kind of understanding that it is a little bit of a game, but as you start to put out consistent content too, understand that someone's going to go directly to your Instagram stories, right? So they're going to look at your Instagram stories first. So make sure you're posting consistent content on Instagram stories and on your Instagram. I have, I'm someone that like, um, I hit million club with like 4,000 followers on Instagram. So I didn't have a really big following when I did it, but I utilized the following that I had. Um, which was I, I talked to the people that were in my niche and I think that I could have done it with 2000. So don't get too caught up. If you're following coaches that really have massive followings, you don't need that. And I just finally looked at the chat and I see Lori's on here. Lori probably has a massive following and like, she would probably tell you the same thing that you don't need a massive following that she built the foundation of her business by talking to people and really utilizing the market that she had. And so, um, don't get too caught up in the numbers of it or the likes of it. Right. Like I didn't like any of my upline coaches posts, but I read them all. So yeah. I love that. Um, it looks like, uh, there, Shannon had a friend. She said she was going to sign up several times, three, um, share cards this week, talk to her multiple times. She doesn't want to annoy her. Um, how would you follow up with somebody like that? I would ask better questions or find more people. So asking better questions in that regard, if it's a close friend of yours, like, hey girl, like acknowledging, like I really don't wanna be annoying. I just know how excited you are. Is there something that's holding you back that you wanna talk about? If there is, let's talk about it. And if not, I'm just gonna kinda of let you do your thing and I'm always here to support you if you need me. And then find more people. You, That's kind of my short answer. <laughs> you, um, somebody's asking about inviting them to coaching opportunity. Do you um, invite more of the coaching opportunity or do you find your coaches within your challengers? Half and half. Um, but when I invite them to the coaching opportunity, I have them do a challenge group first anyways. 
So they start, they'll be signed up as a coach and I'll tell them that they could like bring a friend or two or anyone into the challenge group with them and they can do our coach training simultaneously. But I want them to have that experience first. Um, but I would say like most of my star diamond coaches have been challengers and then become coaches because they're such advocates of the product. And I'm also not a high recruiter. Um, so I will share that too. I'm not a massive recruiter. I'm not a massive like challenge pack slayer. Um, I'm just really consistent. You look that again. He is definitely key, you guys. Um, if you have not, I mean, I think all of us hear that constantly. That, that thing is loose. Consistent. Um, what tracker, I guess, or what, just, if you guys aren't muted, will you mute? Um, if you guys, um, or what, what tracking system do you use for follow-ups or do you, are you just old school pen and paper? Yeah. So I personally use Google streak, just my background in Google. Um, but I have you, I use pen and paper for a really long time and it absolutely worked for me. Um, so I use Google streak, but and Google Street is really awesome, but I think, to be honest, I don't like answering this question, and the reason is because I think a lot of us get caught up in the logistical stuff, but in reality, it's probably, it could be, some people are at a stage in their business where, like, this is really hurting them, that they don't have a tracking system, but some of us are using tracking as a form of analysis paralysis to collect more information before they take action, right? I was so scrappy the first, like, honestly, year of my business, so scrappy, um, and built a really solid business from pen and paper. So I think, yes, the systems and the structure are super important to make it duplicatable, but at the same time, it's a people business. And if people know that you care about them, that's what I would be focused on first, is just focus on how can I serve this person? How can I serve this person? How can I ask better questions? Who is the person that I'm most excited to help? That spending your time on that, less time following coaches, less time worrying about tracking, and more on just like, what are the types of questions that I can ask this person to make sure that she knows that I care about her? That is gonna serve you and it's gonna feel so freaking good. And if I could just say one thing, that would be it, is just focus on the people. And this is going to be so fun and you're going to change your life and you're going to cry a ton because you're going to miss all the goals, but that's going to make you more resilient. Right. And you're also going to hit some, which is going to be really fun too. I love it. And that kind of, you know, those are the questions that were in the chat. You guys, it is nine o'clock. If you guys have any more questions and you think of anything, um, feel free to mess. I mean, I challenge you to just, uh, Instagram message Keisha. She usually yeah. responds back, and um, I mean that because it's true. So um, <laughs> I am so glad that you did this call. I think we learned a lot of good takeaways, solid, tangible takeaways that um, are different and from a different perspective because yeah. I know that everybody has a different perspective. So I definitely thank you so much for jumping on. And you guys can follow her and her podcast. Um, and if you haven't listened to her podcast, I'm seriously like you need to listen to her podcast. Um, yes, she always agree. has tangible takeaways. And I think those are so important. If you can literally take something away from what you heard and use it, you guys, there's several times that I'm like, I'm stuck on what to say or I'm stuck on what to write about. And I can listen to her podcast. Oh my gosh, this just hit home. I can write about it today. So thank um, you. Thank you so true. much. It's so true. So it's the Empower Her podcast. And um, thank you so, so much. And you guys, I will do, uh, as soon as this recording is done and uploaded, I will make sure to upload it. And Keisha, go have a wonderful evening. I hope I didn't catch you in the midst of going on your walk for the evening. With the <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much. I so appreciate you. Thanks for having me on and I will talk to you guys soon. Have a good night. Bye. Thank you.